Hi, everyone. How's everyone Hi. Doing? Hi, Sandy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. How are things going? Uh, good, good. Um, I mean, you know that we are now purchasing another place. <laughs> yeah. In Hamilton. So I'm kind of excited to do that. Now we're in the planning process, preparing for the closing. Yeah, that's a beautiful house and a beautiful neighborhood as well. So it's awesome. That's amazing. How are things, how are things with you going? Good, good. We're busy and the market is busy. I think it's going to start really heating up again soon. Um, not that it ever really died down, but I think things are going to start heating up again soon. I think the fall is going to be super busy. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I've been, they've been, uh, our realtor in Toronto has told us the same thing. Um, they're like, don't, don't list until September. They're like, they're expecting September to, I guess, be pretty, pretty hot. Yeah. Well, I would think so, you know, because um, with everything opening up and borders starting to open up, people starting to go back to school, things like that, I think there's probably still a lot of pent up demand up out there. And I think there's probably a lot of sellers who didn't sell <clears throat> because they were maybe afraid of listing their house during COVID. And I'm sure that they're, you know, I mean, we've had super, super low inventory all in year, right? So I think that'll make a big difference. So yeah, I'm, yeah, we're, we're bracing for a really busy fall for sure. Yeah, and I can imagine because I'm sure also people were still probably feeling very um, like, what if I sell and then I lose my job and then I can't afford the next house. So at least I feel like now with everything opening, I feel like more stability is going to come. Yeah. People will feel more stable and people will feel more secure to go buy or sell or do whatever they want. For sure. I think um, so. We should tell everybody what we're doing here. So every Tuesday, we talk about investing in real estate and different aspects of investing in real estate. So this week, we're talking about mindset. What are we doing next week? Is next, next week stats again? Next week would be stats. Yeah. Stats. Okay. I'm nice super stats. excited. Yeah. Okay. I was looking at some stats this morning and it was just like psh, blew <laughs> my mind, like some of these stats. So I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to bring them up here, but we'll wait until next week. <laughs> and then we'll, then the next week we'll talk about different aspects of investing. So burrs, hold and hold and, um, buy and hold, split. buy and hold, flips, yeah, whatever. And then we'll do Q and A. So, um, so today we're going to talk about mindset and, um, I, I wanted to really talk this morning. I was listening to something which I thought was really interesting. So what I, what I really want to talk about, um, is, is, is basically the, the, principles of success. So this, we're tying this into investing in real estate and your mindset when you're investing in real estate, but this really ties into every aspect of your life, I think. So if you can apply these principles of, of success to your investing in real estate, you can also apply this to anything. Um, the one, the one principle I did want to talk about today was the law of attraction. And I know we hear a lot about the law of attraction, you know, people just say, be positive and things will come to you. It's, it's not that simple, but it is that simple. Um, so there's a lot of different aspects to that, but the easiest, I, I think the easiest thing that you have to remember with, with this law of attraction is that you, you have to know what you want. You really have to decide what is your goal and why do you want that goal? Not, yeah. What is your goal and why do you want it? You have to have a big enough why to be able to achieve that goal. And your goal has to be big enough that it's going to scare you a little bit. It can't be a wimpy goal, right? It's got to be a big goal that's going to scare you a little bit because there's no growth and comfort. If you're comfortable, just know you are not growing because you just can't. So decide what your, what your goal is and, and what you want. Um, and what does success look like to you? What is your, your definition of success? Not anybody else's defini definition of success. I think that's, I don't know about you, Diana, but that's something that's kind of tripped me up a lot through my life is um, having goals or defining success by what other people think and what, what other people think I should be accomplishing or what they want to accomplish. And then I jump on their goal, which wasn't really my goal. So it doesn't resonate with me. Do and then you, it doesn't get that? accomplished because it's not really your goal. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And, and it's also, I feel like it's always a moving target, right? Cause as yes. you evolve, um, I feel like, you know, you, th you think you want this and as you're evolving, you know, it just starts moving because you start realizing 
like that most likely was something that it was someone else that kind of brought it to you or you saw it somewhere you're like yeah I want that but then as you start going towards you're like oh no I actually want this you know like what was I thinking that's like nothing related to me or something like that yeah but also the law of attraction I just wanted to add something that I think also some people um don't think about or think or or like that like yes it is easy but it's not I think it's like yes it's about being positive but putting yourself in the situations and taking actions right because because a lot of people think like if I think positive and I don't do anything and I just sit here positive 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 it's gonna happen you know and it's like no no no. like you have to put yourself in the situations like I'll give myself an example of like you know once I started wanting to treat my real estate as a business, I got involved in a lot of communities. And to be to be honest, I wasn't thinking I'd be like doing this in communities. Like I thought I would be just learning in the communities and meeting people in the communities, right? But but as you, you know, as I was in the communities, you know, then you start finding your fit to say, like, what am I good at? What do I want? And and then that and then that's where, and then if you start building those relationships. Um, I don't know, then things just start coming up, right? And if you're, you have to put yourself in the situation. Yes, 100% Um, agreed. Yeah. And I was going to talk about that in a, in a little bit. Um, But you're right about that. You have to take action. And I think you're, you're a connector, like you like to connect people and you like, you like those communities, you've built a community of investors, you've built a community of um, like mentors and a team around you that that helps you with things, which I think is great. And you've helped those people who you've brought into that community to kind of connect with other people and be able to ask questions. So I I think that's amazing. Like, I think, I think you're, you're hundred percent right. You you do have to do that. So um, I think once you've got, once you've figured out what is it, what is it that you want? Is it, is it the health? Is it happiness? However you define that money? family time, cars, houses, whatever, whatever it is that you want, figure out what it is you want. And then, and then kind of, you need to be able to see yourself there, right? You need to be able to feel yourself there. That's a big component of of it as well. So if it's the car, go to the dealership, sit in the car, get someone to take a picture of you. Um, If it's, if it's the house, you know, if the house is for sale, go to the house, take a picture of you in the house, do something like that, where you can visualize yourself there. Cause that's, I think that's really, really important. Um, or just you need to feel that pain of it because for example like I feel like to be honest the the people that will have the easiest times are the ones that are let's say struggling because you're thinking about money and you're thinking about freeing yourself right so you're thinking how much do I have to make to let's say break even and I can let's say get rid of this job for example and just do something I enjoy Right. I feel like when it's a money thing where it's like you feel that pain of like, I'm just tired of like being paycheck to paycheck. I feel like those are easier to motivate when you're dealing with people, or at least that that I've noticed when you're dealing with people that are in the middle class, like you're good, you're happy and you're okay with things. Those are the, I feel like those become very hard to make that push forward because you're technically are comfortable you're just kind of like irritated with the fact maybe you're kind of controlled by your job a little bit right but money's coming you're not really like feeling the pain I would say yeah and then that's when you have to find those either same thing like you're saying like motivational groups where you have to be around those people because it motivates you or finding that thing that you can't let go of like like and it can be something very very simple like one of the one of one of the people that I'm mentoring, something very simple was um, we did this thing because she just wasn't moving forward and and she was just getting stuck all the time. So I so then and then obviously now I know her very well. So one of the things I said was just like, and she gets her hair done every every month, every two months, right? So I was like, okay, every week you have to have this and this and these three things done every week, even if you miss one, you're not allowed to get your hair done. And that was so traumatizing for her that she's like, no, 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 I need to, and and to someone else, it may not make sense, or maybe so small, like, how could that matter? But for her, like, that just is very important. And she was just like, wow, that that will actually motivate me, because she likes to make sure she, she wants to always feel good and look good, right? So for her, that, yeah, that really worked, that seems like it's really working well for her. So also not feeling like it has to be something big. Or for example, there's another guy where, 
his mission was he wants to get a Tesla and, you know, he broke it down. And again, this guy makes good money. So he's not like struggling, but yeah. it was just the goal of like, his goal was like, I don't want to use my money to pay for this Tesla. I want it to come from my investments and it, it worked for him. Right. So it's just right. like different people have com like, have like it have such different views on things and it's like right. you just find what your trigger point is you know like like that if you're good and and things are okay and you're more just like ah, oh, it's a nuisance to have a job but you're okay because you make enough money and you can like more than pay the bills I feel like those it's a lot harder for those kind of I people agree. to move forward yep and that that's what I was saying earlier like the comfort right like comfort is is the biggest enemy of success, I think, if you're comfortable, because if you're comfortable, you know, it, it, we'll get to a little bit more about gratitude, but um, if you're comfortable, you're not pushing yourself. You got to push yourself a little bit, but you, you touched on another point there, which is about who, who you're around. And the fact is really that like attracts like, right? We're, we are, we are spiritual beings in a physical body. We are a magnet and you will attract whatever you are. So if you're positive, you're going to attract positive. And if you're negative, you're going to attract negative. Mm -hmm. And so you have to, you have to be very careful about that. And that's why you, you want to make sure that you're around people who motivate you. You're around people who inspire you are around people who have big visions and big goals like you do, because if you're around people like that, you will, it, it will help you if you're around people that are negative. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it makes a big difference. And I think we, you know, any anybody with children, we uh, a lot of times we're very careful about who we let our children associate with, but we don't afford ourselves the same thing. We don't think about as much the same thing that is important to us. It's important with who we're around as well. That's really important. That's a yeah, that's a very, very good point. Because even in health wise, it's the same thing, right? They always think like, I want my kids to be very healthy, you make sure that they're in sports, they're working out, they're doing their things. And then you're not even eating healthy, working out and doing yeah. it, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly. Like I, yeah, so a good example of that is so when I was, um, so when when my daughter played sports, or, my, or even, even my boys actually it goes back a long time. So I was the main person who took them to sports. And I would typically, I mean, there were some days where I sat and watched, but a lot of days it was, you know, they're playing on the soccer field. I would find someone to walk the track with, or uh, that would be my, I, I made sure I got a gym membership that I could use at any gym. So I could, you know, if it was a practice, I could drop my daughter off and go to the gym and come back and get her. So those kind of things, instead of sitting and watching, but you, you have to, you have to make those little sacrifices, right? You have to make sure that you're, you're doing, I mean, just like we say, we do all these things for our kids, but sometimes we don't do the same for ourselves. And it's just as important, if not more so for ourselves, because if we're telling our kids, you need to be around positive people, good people, and then we're not, you know, they're, they're watching us. They're not, they're not listening. They're, they're more watching what we say, not as much listening to what we say. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. And just, I mean, if you're not at your 100%, like you may think you're doing the best for your kids or your like your teams or whatever, but that it's very hard to do your best when you're not at your best. And I yes. think people always don't realize that like self care is so important to be yeah. able to be at your best to, to, you know, manage anything because yeah, fine, you can be in a business, running your business and like not taking care of yourself, but you're, maybe you don't realize it, but your business is suffering or the employees are suffering yeah. because you're not at the best. Or maybe it's not, maybe it's like, okay, but you know, maybe your business could be doing so much better, but because you're kind of stuck in that rut, you yeah. know, you're what, like, if you're stuck in the rut, your business is in the rut, you know, like yes. anything, yes. everything is, you just don't really notice it because yes. you're in it, right? It's like someone outside of you needs to kind of like, Hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yes. you know, we all need that person that says, Hey, what's going on? So, yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you talked a little bit about visualizing it. So let's talk about that. So really, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. So people think that you, you describe what you see, right? But you don't, you see what you describe. So every single thing that's, that's, around us was a vision in somebody's mind before it became a reality 
right? Like, just think about the fact that we're on Zoom here and we can do these calls and we can broadcast this to whoever we want. This had to be a vision in somebody's mind first before it became a reality, right? Like the mouse that we use for a keypad, the paper, anything that's here, they, you know, this phone. I mean, think about this. This, this thing used to be a massive computer and look what it is now. We're all carrying these around in our pockets. This was a vision that somebody had. So figure out what's, what's your vision. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can, you know, create a vision board where you can put things on there that you want. Um, like I said earlier, like the car you want, go, go to the dealership and sit in the car, create a goal card and, and write on that goal card, write what your goal is on that card. These have got to be big, hairy, audacious goals. It can't be wimpy goals. It's got to be a big goal because it, you're not going to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Have that big goal, write it on a goal card and carry that goal card with you every day and read it every day. I did this years ago in the real estate business and it was really funny um, that the goal that I put down on that business card, I found it a few years later and I had well surpassed that goal. And I can tell you when I put the goal down on the card, it was like, I thought to myself, wow, like if I could hit this number, I've made it, like I've made it. And now if I were to hit that number, it wouldn't be a successful year for me. It would be a very bad year. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, every time you do stuff, it just becomes a little bit easier and a little bit easier. You got to step outside your comfort zone. And when you do that, it becomes a little bit easier to do it the next time. You're going to run into those barriers. You're going to run into what they call the terror barrier, which is going to scare you and try to pull you back. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to just keep going and it, and it will, it will make a big difference. But you, if you can, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And like that, that self-sabotage or you call it the terror. What is it? The terror, the terror barrier. Yeah, that's, that is, that, that is very hard. I think we all, uh, we also call them ceilings, you know, like yeah. you, once you hit a ceiling, um, you know, it's like you're going back to that struggle again. It's a different struggle because now you're learning something new, but breaking through that ceiling, yeah. you know, oh, it's so hard. And, and you do yes. these like self-sabotage, you go back, yes. like I'm comfortable on this floor. I don't yes. want to go there anymore. Exactly. <laughs> and that's, yes. And that's, that's the terror barrier. So I'll explain that a little bit. So what happens is you, you, you have a goal and you know, it's one of those things where you, you think I'll take the gentleman with the Tesla, for instance. I want to buy a Tesla. And then, and then your mind starts, your mind is going to pull you back into comfort. That's your brain's job. Your brain's job is to keep you comfortable and to keep you safe. So then it's like, well, why would you want to do that? And there's so much money and, you know, you could do this and, you know, who do you think you are buying that? That's, you know, that's too scary. You're gonna to have to pay for that forever. That's kind of that terror barrier that pulls you back and you're just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't, you know, maybe, maybe not, maybe next year, maybe next year. And we all know next year it doesn't come, never comes. So I think it's really important to stay really focused on what your goal is and really believe in it. And when you, if you know you're going to hit that terror barrier, that's half the battle. Because if you know, then you can say to yourself, okay, I understand what's happening here. I understand that I was, this was going to happen and now I've just got to push through it. So that's a, that's a big part of it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, man, those barriers. <laughs> yes, because I'm sure when you went from deciding that you were going to leave the corporate world and decide, well, I'm going to make investing my that's going to be my business, and, and I'm sure at that point you were, you know, you had those nights or those moments of, what am I doing? Why would I do that? Like I have, you know, I have a steady job, I have an income. Why would I want? Like, what are you doing? And I'm sure you had people say the same thing to you, like, Diana, are you crazy? What are you doing? Like, <laughs> you know, why would you do that? So, yeah, it's it's very scary, but it's I don't know. It's a lot of fun to go to to go through it as long as you're like oh, you have the self awareness, which is is very important because that's basically what you're talking about is having the self awareness to see yourself kind of thing, which I think is very very hard to have the self awareness, especially when you're in it. You know, when you're in it, I think it's hard. Um, so for example, like you said, like you see, you see a ceiling coming or your ceiling, you're, you're seeing, you know, you're going through the, the fears or the self-sabotage. And I feel like at least with me, it's always like, I'm, I don't see it coming. It's more like I'm in it. And I see, I'm like, oh man, I'm doing self-sabotage again. <laughs> Need to stop it. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I get those, like those moments of what was I thinking? 
what was I thinking? Why did I decide to do this? Like what, what possessed me, right? Like I, I, I gave up drinking coffee. So it's been, uh, the last time I had a coffee was June 22nd and I drink a lot of coffee. I love coffee. So <laughs> I just decided one day that, you know, I, I wanted to break the habit. So I decided I was going to give it up for 90 days. And that whole day when I decided I was going to give it up, you know, the whole day, my mind was like, I mean, this sounds really simple, but like, it's <laughs> not as easy as it sounds, but the whole day, my brain was like, well, you know, like if this, so this was June 22nd. Well, now it's summer and things are starting to open up and you know your favorite thing is to sit on a patio with your friends and have a coffee so maybe I'll do it maybe I'll do it in the fall and then I was like no Sandy no you know like I had a lot of conversations with myself no Sandy you're not doing it in the fall you're doing it today well you know like you know I just went on and on that day like all this gibberish going on in my brain about why the timing wasn't right and I just kept saying you know no no Sandy you're doing it you're doing it you're just doing it just get it done but <laughs> That's so true. Oh my God, it, it is. And again, that's actually how our minds are built, which I think you were basically alluding to, if not saying it already, that our mind does anything and everything not to change a habit. Doesn't yeah. matter if that habit's a good habit, a bad habit, doesn't matter. Your mind does not understand the difference. It just knows it's locked in the specific habit. Yes. And it's, and it's exactly like it's telling you that, no, 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 what are you doing? You know, this is, this is how things are. You were not going to change. And yes, and it does yes. a very, very good job at trying to keep you at where you at right now, which is, yes. it is a huge struggle for me. It doesn't yeah. happen the day of, I usually have like this grace period of like one or two days where I'm like, this is so easy. This is amazing. <laughs> and then, and then I do the crash and like the second or third day, I'm just like, nope I don't want to do this anymore I, yeah same thing like I just start telling myself everything yes. and, yeah and that's well, where brain, example, mental strength becomes a very important part exactly of mental strength yeah the brain so the brain that part of the brain has no ability to reason has no ability does can't tell time can't reason all its job is is to you know protect us to protect us from whatever it thinks we need protection from so our mind, you know, it's interesting, right? You think about that. Like if you asked a brain surgeon to work on somebody's mind, they couldn't They can work on somebody's brain, but you've never seen a person's mind, right? They've only seen people's brains, which I think really ties in well with, you know, if you can see it, if, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand, right? Because you can't see the mind and fear, fear and um, faith are both based on things we can't see. So why do we always default to fear and believe those things, right? Like think about most of the time when you're afraid, it's it's not something that you can, it's not something in front of you. It's not, you know, a bear coming at you or anything like that. It's, it's invisible. So, but we so easily will internalize that fear even though we can't see it, but we say we don't internalize the faith because we can't see it. But what's the difference? We can't see either. So why not just embrace the faith and not embrace the fear? Yeah. Right. And I think it's, yeah. I think it just makes it easier that way. So yeah. yeah. Um, and I think like self talk for that is also important to, um, when it comes to fear because again that's like an innate thing in us of our survival is fear comes in, but then yeah. it's telling yourself, you know, how I looked into everything. Like, why am I worried about this yes. happening? It's kind of, you have to do that self-talk. Um, Cause I, yeah, I feel like when the fear comes in, you become very irrational and you just think of like all the bad things that can happen. And sometimes these bad things are like completely unrealistic and they would <laughs> never happen in the, in the whole world. And you're just exactly. like, no, you know, like aliens are going to come and, and they're just going to like blow up my house. So I shouldn't even buy a house. And you're like, yes. what? <laughs> It's so true, right? It's so some of them, yes, you're right. Some are so irrational. It's not even it's not even funny. So why not why not dream big? Like why not take it irrational in the other way, right? Like I'm I'm fascinated by the mind because I've seen I've seen people with mental illnesses who can whose mind really tells them that things are going on that are not going on. Mm -hmm. And so it, it started to fascinate me about how much how powerful the mind really is. Yeah. And if the mind could be that powerful in that respect, if you could harness that and, and make it powerful the other way, you know, 
So why not dream big, right? Why not take those big risks? Because what's what's the reality? I mean, let's let's be honest. We're all like basically blessed. If you live in this country, you're blessed, right? So why not, you know, think about what, what are your basic needs and how much do you really need for your basic needs? It's not a lot of money. So you're always going to be able to provide for your basic needs. I mean, we all got this far in life. We're going to be able to keep going. So why not dream big? Don't be afraid of the failure. Maybe sometimes I think maybe that's it. It's the ego, right? Well, what if I fail? And then people say, oh, you fail. It's no such thing as failing. It's only failing if you don't try, but it's pretty, it's, it's pretty interesting. I think the next, I think the next step on this road of, of getting what you want and moving forward is just ask for it, believe that you will get it and then receive it. Mm-hmm. So by and asking acknowledge those fears, because fear is not a, uh, you can't see also, for example, fear is a bad thing. You yes. have to see fear as an indicator to just kind of be like, did I look at, into everything that I was supposed to more of an indicator to, to kind of let you know, you know, like, should I double check some things? It's more like thinking of it in, in that way, instead of thinking yeah. of it, nope, nope, you know, like, I'm fearing, I, I'm feeling fear, that means I need to stop immediately, because I, yeah. I know that there's lots of people that have that, you know, they, um, like these intuitions where it's like, oh, you know, I'm feeling this, so I should stop. And they take it as a sign, but exactly. it's not a sign, right? It's a, it's a, it's your body you just have to, yeah. you, from you have to feel fear. If you don't, if you don't feel fear, you're not, you're not growing, you're not trying hard enough, but you can't let it paralyze you, I think is the difference, right? Like you're saying, take some action, take some type of action. So mm-hmm. I think that's where I was going to go with this next is just ask, believe, and then receive. So once you ask for it, just ask for it, but don't get stuck. A lot of us get stuck in the how. Well, how's that going to happen? How am I going to do that? How am I going to do this? How is this going to happen? Don't get stuck in the how. Just ask for it, believe, internalize it, and feel it, and then get ready to receive it because you're going to get messages from the infinite universe to show you that you're on the right path, but you have to tap into those messages. You can't disregard them. Yeah. And actually that receiving is also very hard. I actually, that was something that I found very interesting because uh, I think that's the goal giver where they talk about it. I think it's the goal giver where the final step is receiving. And, um, and I think this happens a lot to specifically to people that are very much givers and they give, 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 and then you see them struggling all the time. And for some reason, a lot of people will have, and I feel like I didn't realize that this was a problem until I read this book where opportunities will come or things will come to you. And because of maybe ego, or maybe because whatever, I guess it would always be ego, some in some sense in ego, that you may stop it without even realizing that you're stopping it. And someone's like making offering you something. And, and you're just like, no, 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 I can take care of it myself. Yes. You know, and and you don't realize that that was actually, that was because you, you know, helped in what another way somewhere else. Right. And, you know, and there, there are people always think like reciprocal, right? Like, yes, you need something. So I should be receiving it from you, which, which um, it's not always going to be that way. Like you yeah. may give me something. I may give someone else something and another completely different person out of nowhere will give me something. And, and because I don't know that person, I'll be like, no, no, it's okay. I don't need it. Yes. And, uh, yeah, you're so right. You're so right. But that's a whole law of attraction, right? So if you give me something and then I feel the need to give you something back and then you give me something and I give you something, that's just going back and forth. But when you think, I think if we use a term like most people would, would recognize is like pay it forward, right? So you, you, want, you want to give things without any thought of getting something in return. You will get something in return somehow, some way, it's not probably going to come back directly from that person, but it will come back to you in some way, yeah. for sure. It has to. That's a law. Yeah, keeping your eyes and your ears open for that, because yes. like a lot of people close their eyes to everything else. Like you have your blinders on, and you're like swiping away all these opportunities because because yeah, you you're don't focused think on yes. yes, yeah, and then so it's like you're actually receiving and you're saying no to all these things, and it's like something so simple. You know where you know i remember what uh, this was a a while ago where um i was like clean it's something very basic i was like not even related to real estate but you know i was like cleaning the dishes and i was reading the book and then you know my husband comes and he's like oh let me help you and i'm like no no it's okay 
And then, yeah. and then afterwards, I was like, why did I say that? He's helping me. That's a good thing. You know, and I'm just so used to me doing yeah. the dishes uh, myself that for some reason I said no. And I was just like, why did I say no? Now he's not going to want, he will not <laughs> offer it, you know? And, and I was just kind of like, that was, and it's just like little, like, you know, like little things where you just yes. get so used to your routines or your habits and you're like, no, no, it's okay. I got it. Yeah. And then, so it's like, programming yourself to be like why am I saying no what's wrong with for example my husband helping me just do the yeah, dishes so sure. I don't know what was wrong with that it was just like it was kind of like ingrained for some reason yes. that's okay I got it yeah, <laughs> like, I know. why I don't know why I know it's so funny right but I think I think sometimes it's um it, it's a habit maybe but I think also like when we think of when we, when we talk about like some of our bigger goals and receiving those bigger goals I think part of that also is our self-image, you have to feel worthy of it, right? Because you, you just, you can't outperform your self-image. So if you don't feel like you are that person, then you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to accept it. You're gonna, so, somehow you're gonna sabotage it. So you really have to work on your self-image and you're the person that, you know, that is, that is for you. That is something that you've wanted and you have to receive it and take it and move forward. And then, you know, I always say, go as far as you can see, you'll be able to see farther. And so I think you just get yourself there and then you go to the next step and you go to the next step. And I think that's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. And like, uh, I, I don't remember, I think it's called Yes. There's like a movie on Yes. And I always never really understood, like say yes to everything. Yeah. But always say yes to everything. Cause that doesn't mean you have to, like, let's say with a deal, like you say, yes, I want to buy that house. That doesn't mean that you're going to not do your due diligence and, you know, like, let's say they're saying, you know, 600 K and you're like, this house is not worth even let's say 550. Yeah. Right? And then, so you're going to say, Oh, I, I can't say yes. I have to say yes. No. And then you start like negotiating or trying oh, to wow. figure out yeah. a solution. Right. So always say yes to the, to everything, but just you, you find, you know, you, but then it's the negotiation that happens, right. That you figure out, okay, what do you really want out of this? You know, what do I need out of this? How can we yeah. come to an agreement so that the yes, you know, gets accomplished, right? So always yes. say yes. Doesn't mean, I mean, it doesn't mean you'll always get everything, but if you don't say no and you always find a way to say yes, you start realizing your your mind will start um, trying to find solutions to make that yes happen that works for you and yourself, right? And then you start asking questions. How can I, how can I help? you solve your issue so I can get my yes and you can get your yes yeah you no know, instead yeah. of being like oh 600 no it's okay yes no. I love that oh my goodness I love that analogy that's a that's a great analogy because I know sometimes like especially with people who are selling a house for the first time like they bought a house and now they've got to sell it and they get an offer on the house and they look at the first thing they look at is the price and then they'll say okay I don't want this offer and I you know walk them through this is an offer, like this is what we do here are your options, you can accept it, you can reject it, or you can change it back and send it back to them. So I think you, you're, you're, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I love that analogy about say yes, and then work out the terms doesn't mean you're, you have to do it on, on that person's terms. Do you want that house? Yes. Okay, well, let's figure out a way to do it, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing that's I love that I'm going to keep yeah. using it, so yeah because that was something I never really got you know I was like I'm never always going to say yes to everything but then once I started like understanding things I started yeah. realizing you do want to say yes to everything but in an intelligent way right yes. like, like you're not yet saying yes yeah. to everything they say you're saying yes to the the higher thing what is whatever it is like that like in the case I said like buying a house okay yes I want to buy your house yeah, now we just need to work on the terms, right. right? To make it work for both of us, right? And then it's just like trying to be creative to satisfy both sides. Yeah. So yes, so yes, I want to buy your house. No, I don't want to pay the price that you're asking, but you know, we'll get there. So that's that's a really interesting. That, I love that analogy. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think the last thing we have to we have to really talk about with this law of attraction, and this is this is a big one. This is the biggest one, I think. You have to practice, you have to practice gratitude for what you currently have. So we, you know, we're blessed in so many ways here and we have so much more than a lot of people, like the majority of the world and not a small, like a big majority of the world, we have a lot more than. So, and just, that's just by living in this country. 
you got to be grateful for what you have. You should never be satisfied. It doesn't mean you have to be satisfied, but you do have to be grateful for what you already have. And once you have, once you're grateful, then things more things will start to come for you. But if you're not grateful, if you're not thankful for what you already have, like, you know, I, I tell a story, like something happened um, recently where my daughter told me this story. We, we, my kids grew up in a very, I did, I came from a, um, an area of Toronto that was not very affluent. So it was like a pretty rough neighborhood. Anyway, as w when our kids were younger, we moved to an area that was very affluent. We, we weren't like, there was very affluent people in that neighborhood. We didn't have, a, we didn't have a lot, even more poor by any stretch, but we didn't have as much as most of the people there. And anyway, I always wondered, you know, um, my, my kids grew up, I, I like to think that like, very grateful for what they have. And I always wondered, I never really understood why that happened. Like I, I, I would be very thankful that they didn't turn into like these spoiled kids that were like, oh, they have so much more than us. How come we don't have that? And I never, I could never really understand why they turned out that way. But a few days ago, my daughter said to me um, that there was one lesson that I taught her in life. There was two lessons she learned from us and, and uh, two really important lessons she learned. One was that everything tastes better when you share your food. And the other one was that we are rich because we have family. Mm -hmm. And it just dawned on me like, okay, that's it. But that is one of my core beliefs. Like we have a family that loves each other. We are rich. That's, that is rich to me. Mm -hmm. and, and I never really, it's so funny that I never, I never put the two together until she said that to me a few days ago. And I thought, okay, that's why, like, you know, thank God I thought that way, but that is truly the way I feel. It's not about the money. It's about, you know, what you have and your friends and your family and all that kind of stuff. Because realistically, you know, I've seen so many people with mental health and addiction issues. And I've always, always believed that it, it doesn't matter how much money you have. If you don't have mental health, you don't have anything. So all the money in the world is not going to solve that issue. So I thought that was really important, but that's why I think you have to be super grateful for what you have and what, you know, the things that you have today, the simple things, the pen that you use to write with, you know, like I always say books because they've allowed me to learn, learn so much by reading books, the pen that allows me to be able to write things down and read and learn, you know, my car that gets me around all these different things, a roof over my head. So I think, I think that the gratitude part is a big key component of that. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think it goes back again to self care, because for example, I mean, there's uh, like scientific proof that, you know, you being, for example, positive to another person, you know, like makes that person positive and it, you know, goes out and same thing comes with gratitude. People actually, there's been studies where people need gratitude, like need to be, need to hear, for example, yes. oh my God, Sandy, thank you so much, for example, for helping me this weekend and coming over to see this property with me, you know, like people need the gratitude and the fact that let's say people need it means that we need it. So again, how are we not saying to ourselves, you know, Diana, I mean, you did amazing. You got another house. That's so good that you did that. It's like yes. everything always comes to self care, you know, like if, if I'm not, if I'm not grateful for the things that I do for myself, how am I supposed to understand how to be grateful to others, you know, and same thing, others need it. Like, like everyone yeah. needs self care in every which way, health wise, mentally, physically, um, like you need it. And if yeah. you're not doing it to yourself, you know, it's just like, you're again, not being the best you can be. And gratitude is one of those because I mean, there's studies that people need that they actually, they actually need um, like the thank yous and they need yes. to like feel that, you know, that they've, you know, they've done for some something for you and, and they need to feel appreciated for it. Right. And then if they need that appreciation, why don't you yourself need the appreciation for what you do for yourself? Yes. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking at one of the comments. So and Kate saying, celebrate your successes, which is so true right i mean that part of it's so true celebrate every little success celebrate the failures because the failures are what teach you the most mm -hmm. but yeah celebrate the little successes along the way of course like that's that is super important you got to be grateful celebrate what you already have celebrate when you achieve something you know like yeah. you think of when you bought your first house and how exciting and scary and all of that that you know all of that was so mm -hmm. it's and it really keeps yeah. you positive yes i noticed that I, um, sometimes we get so consumed in the work, 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 
and you don't realize how much you've done in the past and then sometimes work becomes very hard and like you feel like you're never achieving things yeah because you've actually realized that you've never acknowledged the ones the achievements that you've made you know sometimes you talk to people I'm like what are you talking about but you've done this you've done that you've done that you've done that and then it's like oh yeah <laughs> I, think, I think we all fall into that trap especially if it's especially if it's something that kind of comes easy to us right I mean whatever comes easy to you is your gift so you, you have to you have to go with that gift but sometimes because it comes easy we just think that everybody everybody gets it everybody is the same and they're not right like there are that people that love I think when you're also very busy you kind of you've already forgetting what's happened because you're just yeah. like I'm so busy I gotta go 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 yes yes then, yeah. uh, so I think yeah both of those being busy and also yeah exactly you know when it's second nature to you it doesn't feel like you've done anything right like that's just how it is like it just I'm just doing what I do yes like, what you do is probably uh actually like other people can do it and again appreciating that you have those abilities to do that to move yeah. forward right because and that's yeah in different ways for sure that's what I that's what I see like in you and the networking and the connecting that you do I'll bet that you don't think that's a big deal you you probably just think that everybody does that stuff but they don't so you know you're just you're a, a, you know you're a people person obviously and you connect people and I think it's I think it's huge I bet you don't think that that's anything special but it really is you know, actually you know actually it was really funny that you say that I remember a few months ago people were telling me things like oh my god you help so many people out and do this and that and and I was like what do you mean? I'm like, I, I, how am I helping people? You know, I didn't, for some reason, because again, my, my version of helping people is like, either I'm mentoring them, I guess, like, you know, seeing them, or for example, we're working on projects together. But for yeah. example, you're right, I never saw like this community as, you know, helping so many people for, I don't know why. <laughs> I just did it. It comes easy. Yeah. And I didn't understand. I remember at the beginning, some people would tell me these things. And I was like, I was thinking maybe they were talking about because sometimes on the communities I'll post and I'll, you know, someone asks a question and I respond to them. I'm like, oh, this is what I would do or that. And I was just like, oh, I, I guess, I guess people read my post, like the post that I would message to other people. Yeah. And the person was the one that brought it up that the shows that I do and I'm like oh people are watching it I'm like no one ever comments on them so I'm just like I assume, they're watching yeah they're I assume watching for sure. I'm yes. doing it more for my you know I feel like sometimes I'm doing it more for me than anyone else because like that if you don't see comments sometimes you feel yes. like I guess no one's watching but at least I'm at least I'm getting some value at least, you're, not, at least <laughs> you're enjoying it yeah for sure no I think it's I, I think it's yeah I think what you do is really special and I'm sure that you don't understand it but I, I really found that when um, when we first when I first started taking my business and donating money from from our business and and I would explain to people what we do that we donate a portion of our commission on every home sale to mental health awareness and I would tell that story to our buyers and sellers and this is why we want to sell more houses because we want to donate more money and, and people would just be looking at me and I I, and I always thought oh my God, they think I'm crazy, like whatever. And then what started to happen was people started, some of those clients would call me and share their story with me and tell me about things that were going on in their family or tell me that they, they decided to do business with us because of that. And I started to realize that it wasn't that they didn't appreciate what we were doing. It's that, you know, I mean, with mental health, there's a lot of stigma. So a lot of times people wouldn't say anything, but eventually they would come around and it's become a very big part of our business. And, and I get calls all the time from people who want to talk about mental health or ask me, you know, for advice and stuff. So it's, it's the same with you. Like you've got these communities and you do all this stuff and you never really know how many people are kind of out there watching you and, and really being grateful for what you do and not reaching out. So I think it's a good lesson for us to say, you know, when, when we see something like that and we're grateful, let the people let someone know that we're grateful for what they do because sometimes you're right they don't know they just think okay well whatever but you're having so much fun doing it and you have you know you have great people on there and you have a great time so you know whatever do what you love and everything else will fall into place right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so um okay so next tuesday we are talking about stats which will be fun i'm not i'm not a huge I'm, i won't say i'm not a numbers person i'm not 
the person to put the numbers together. But <laughs> um, but looking at the numbers, it fascinates me sometimes with, with what people think is the reality, but what really is the reality. And I have a I have a chart that's going to blow your mind that I'll show next week. Um, yeah, it'll be crazy. So well, anyway, I started noticing how, you know, the information you have, I feel like the common public doesn't see it for a few months afterwards. Cause you're that's exactly that. right. Cause I'm always that's, like, oh, I see this happening in the market right now. And then, and then other people are talking about it like a few months later. I'm like, I think we're past that point. Now yes. we're the next step, you know, that's, right. <laughs> that's why you can't, that's why you can't time the market. Like don't try to time the market when you're, when when is the best time to buy a house when you're ready to buy a house? Don't try to time it. Because because by the time you figure out what's what's going on, you've, you've missed it. Like, that's old news. By the time, right? It, yeah, 100%. Those are you're things that have happened. I've always, I've always said, if you're hearing it in the news, you've missed the boat. <laughs> you missed it. For sure, you missed it. Yeah. And that's you know, why like, these communities are so important, right? Because with these communities, the communities are up to date. It's the common public yes. that is not up to date. Exactly, exactly. And when you're in these communities, you're, you know, you Everyone sometimes you're thinking like, everyone. yeah, you're seeing stuff in the news and you're thinking, okay, that's not my reality. And you talk to somebody else and it's like, yeah, no, that's not, not mine either. Like we're, we're having the same experience and so are all these people, then that is what's going on in the market, not what they're yeah. talking about in the news yeah. for sure. Or like you're saying, you know, like, oh, didn't that happen already a couple months ago? I'm like, <laughs> What do you, why are they talking about that now? Like, that already happened. Yes. <laughs> so funny. Yes, it's so true. So this was great. I love, always love talking to you, Diana. And um, so I will see you next Tuesday. So every Tuesday on the flip side with Diana and Sandy. And next Tuesday is stats. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Sandy. Thank okay. you, everyone, for listening. Thank you. See you later, Diana. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.